Welcome back to another Hardware News Weekly Recap. We're going over the last week of hardware news. So if you missed stuff, this is the place to be for this coverage. We're looking at things like new displays, some motherboard announcements, coolers, and uh, open and closed loop varieties. We've also got one peripheral, a case, a video card, and a power supply. So that's the news for the last week. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's new Vengeance RGB LED RAM, which ships with custom screened ICs for better overclocking performance and stability. Given that memory is highly relevant for performance with new Ryzen CPUs, now is a good time to do research on high performance kits. Start with the Vengeance RGB LED kit at the link in the description below. First up, LG's got a new monitor coming out. This one is a production targeted monitor. It has some really cool features on it, like an integrated KVM or keyboard video mouse switch. So that means you could plug in one set of keyboard video and mouse and have two computers feeding into the monitor. So that's always a nice thing to include. Uh, it is the LG 43UD79-B. And uh, if you're wondering what those numbers and letters mean, the 43 is rounded up from 42.5, which is the uh, inch size of the monitor. So it's a 42.5 IPS display. It's a 4K panel. And the 79, I have no idea what it stands for. The B stands for black. So uh, that's LG's new monitor. This thing is targeted primarily at production, as stated. It's got an eight millisecond gray to gray response. Not fantastic for gaming. And uh, other than that, it does, it, I mean, it technically has a game mode built in, which is supposed to help with input latency and things like that. Sometimes they help, sometimes they do absolutely nothing. It's just something you have to test on a per display basis. It has a black stabilizer. It's got FreeSync. Uh, so FreeSync is integrated now. Well, Vega is coming out soon, fortunately. Up until Vega, when you have FreeSync on an expensive display, it's kind of a weird setup because your choices until very recently were an RX 480 to go with your expensive monitor. And those two don't normally mix. But with Vega, that will change. So FreeSync's on there. It is a 60 hertz refresh. And that eight millisecond grade gray means not particularly a gaming targeted device, but there are plenty of 4K panels out there that can do high refresh coming out very soon. Other features include 350 nits of brightness. It's got a 104 pixels per inch density, one display port, port, that's a 1.2A version, two HDMI 2.0, two HDMI 1.4, USB 3.0 type C with DP alt mode, which is becoming more common these days. And uh, finally, there are two USB 3.0 hubs with the built-in KVM switch, as stated earlier. So this is LG's newest display. Uh, one final side interesting note, it can display image from uh, four devices at once. So you've got four picture inputs. It will segment them into quadrants. So you've got four quadrants, uh, each 21 by 21.5 uh, 1080p sections. So pretty cool stuff. Not really gaming targeted, but interesting nonetheless for the technology. Next up, Asus has their new Maximus 9 Extreme Z270 board that we've seen in the past. We saw some of these boards, actually one of them at CES in the Donkey Kong mod build that we did a video on. But the Maximus 9 Extreme Z270 board hasn't really been available uh, widely. It should be now. It's finally shipping en masse. It was debuted in March, and most prominently, the board boasts an integrated monoblock in collaboration with Bits Power. So that's the version that's seen widespread now and uh, features a built-in flow rate meter, water leakage, and inlet outlet temperature sensors that are controllable via UEFI or ASUS's Fan Expert for utility. And also included are 12 fan headers on the board, eight of which are radiator fan headers and two being water pump headers, which all that means really is the labeling on them. And other than that, you've got headers for flow rate, temperature, and RGB lighting. So this is definitely an enthusiast class open loop targeted board. It does not really belong and use for something with a CPU tower cooler on it. Other notables include two M.2 slots, support for SATA PCIe by four NVMe or Intel Optane now, eight SATA three ports, eight USB 3.0 and uh, four USB 2.0 ports via headers. And there's also your normal mix of Thunderbolt, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, all that stuff uh, with, of course, to reinforce PCIe X16 slots because you need metal reinforcement on everything now, apparently. Overclocking support is always one of the biggest features of ROG motherboards. This one has a voltage checkpoints in a few places. These are not too uncommon these days on the higher end boards. Uh, so it is something you see more prevalently on stuff like Maximus class ROG board, but they've got Q code LED, LN2 mode jumpers, 
slow mode switches, RSVD switches, retry buttons, safe boot buttons, which by the way are amazing. It's so good to have a safe boot button. Mem OK, uh, DRAM channel jumpers, and ROG extension connectors. So uh, lots of cool stuff. If you're wondering what all that cool stuff costs, the answer is $630. Uh, so this is something targeted at more of the extreme overclocking enthusiast type of people but certainly worth looking into just because the technology is kind of neat. Deep Cool has an updated Captain EX that's supposed to be coming out in June. It is the RGB version. So that's, I mean, that's really, that's all there is to say. It's the Deep Cool Captain EX now with RGB. That is priced at $100 for the 120 EX version, which is obviously 120 millimeters, 130 for the 240 EX, which is 240 millimeter. And I have off camera, I have a Captain EX that we've been working on. We've, we're in contact with Deepcool now, talking about some testing issues. But uh, this is the one that we have pre-RGB. The RGB version is the same, just with RGB LEDs. Uh, this one, I believe, has a white LED in the top, and that's it. So there's an updated version of that. That's supposed to come out in June after Computex. Uh, TDP rating is 150 watts on the CPU, so it can handle most of the things out there OK, though. We'll let you know how it actually handles once our testing is complete. Corsair this week announced a new high-end gaming mouse following the announcements from Razer and Rocket. The Corsair Glaive RGB is their new aluminum frame mouse. It is right-handed and uses interchangeable thumb grips, of which three are included. The Glaive uses a 16,000 DPI sensor provided by PixArt that can be adjusted from 100 to 16,000 DPI with a polling rate adjustable from 125 to 1,000 Hertz. The mouse buttons are made up of Omron micro switches rated for 50 million clicks. These are fairly common in this type of mouse. It's nothing special. And there are six programmable buttons on the mouse. This is all done through Corsair's Q software, which also allows for backlight zone adjustment, which there are three zones on this particular mouse. You can assign macros to buttons there, store DPI and lighting settings, things like that. The Corsair Glaive RGB should already be available, I think. I'm not sure if we're going to review that one. Uh, it's a $70 mouse. That's sort of where the G502 sits these days. That was a good mouse when we reviewed it, but uh, we've actually mostly moved on to the G900 at the high end and the G403 for something a bit lighter. So the Glaive we haven't looked at or gotten hands on yet, but that's one to look out for from Corsair. Liquid cooling news. There's stuff from EK this week. EK Waterblocks now offers users the opportunity to purchase the CPC quick disconnect couplings found in their Predator line of AIO coolers. The couplings are intended to be used with soft tubing with an internal diameter of 10 millimeters and outer diameters of 13 or 16 millimeters. Clamps are included for both sizes and prices are set at $33. These can be ordered through EKWB directly and are new as of this week. There's a new water block for the ASUS 1080 Ti Strix Edition that we're reviewing later this week. And it is the Pacific 5 GTX 1080 Ti Strix transparent water block. That's made in collaboration with Thermaltake if Pacific didn't give that away. The water block will be transparent on the front side. It's a full coverage block, so it covers VRM components and VRAM and the GPU itself. It's got clear acrylic top uh, affixed to a nickel plated copper base plate. And for those unaware, nickel plating, it's just used for the look, basically. Uh, there is some protection against things like galvanic corrosion. It's not gonna damage your cooling performance in any way. But uh, other than that, the water block does come with an included four millimeter back plate. It's got standard G, quarter inch fittings, pricing and availability currently unknown, but that is the Pacific 5 GTX 1080 Ti water block from Thermaltake and Asus. In power supply news, Silverstone has added two models to their entry level essential series line of power supplies. These are the ET550-B and ET650-B, so that'd be 550 and 650 watts. Both units are 80 plus bronze certified, that's where the dash B comes from if you're curious. And although the cables are fixed, Silverstone offers a unique approach. The cables are flat, so they're a bit less visible. They are blackout cables with no color coding for the voltages. And heavy duty protections are limited just to overpower protection, over voltage protection, and short circuit protection. Cooling is handled by a 120 millimeter sleeve bearing fan, and both units offer an MTBF allegedly of 100,000 hours. Silverstone's got a three year warranty on those. Availability is limited to EU with US availability to be determined. In the case department, Corsair has taken their Spec Alpha case and Spec 01 and shifted it 
to the budget market. So they're, they've basically shrunken it and changed the face a bit, but it's obviously the same ID. Uh, so this new one is the Spec 04. It's a $50 enclosure. The original Spec, I remember Corsair telling me when it first launched, uh, actually before it launched, we saw it in their facility. I pointed at it and we kind of made jokes about it, uh, but it was targeted for an Asia only launch because they knew it would sell really well there. Well, it turns out it sold really well in the US as well. So now they've got the Spec 04 and that's targeted at a bit of everyone. Uh, so the Spec Alpha we've shown in the past in PC builds, Spec 04 we have coming in and we'll be reviewing. That will be a new accompaniment to the $50 line. Uh, there's some radiator support. I don't know that many people put 240 millimeter radiators in a $50 case, but you could do that with this one. 120 is also supported. And uh, this is more of a clean line with kind of a bold color statement on it. You can get gray, yellow, or I believe red for the colors. Uh, it looks just kind of like a distorted version of the Spec Alpha. If that's your thing, then cool. They have it for you. It can fit five fans. And uh, I mean, other than that, we'll have a review for you shortly to talk about how the actual performance is in terms of thermals and acoustics, but keep an eye out for that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Finally, new video card for this week. Can't go a week without a video card. Uh, the MSI 1080 Ti now gets a, well, there's already a Seahawk edition, but now there's a Seahawk EKX edition. Uh, this is similar to the previous Seahawk EKX. The X means that it's pre-overclocked. And then Seahawk means it's liquid cooled. EK means it uses EK water blocks. So uh, it's an open loop card rather than the Seahawk that existed prior to the EK version, which is a closed loop card using an Asetek cooler. And this has a full coverage block from EKWB, as you might expect. It features the MSI Dragon design, as always. And uh, it uses the same PCB as the Gaming X. So we reviewed the 1080 Ti Gaming X already. And we have a full PCB analysis of it done by Buildzoid. If you're curious about what this card is like in terms of PCB, VRM, electrical layout, all that stuff, you already know. You can watch our 1080 Ti Gaming X PCB analysis. That is the same thing. Uh, so this will be a liquid-cooled version. I don't have a price for you today, uh, but it's certainly more expensive than the Gaming X standalone version. The stock speeds are 1569 megahertz base, 1683 boost, with a memory speed of 11, 120 megahertz, so 11.1 gigahertz on the memory. As always, you can check links in the description below for more information. Just go to gamersnexus.net to follow this stuff throughout the week. Patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like a shirt. We've got the new TriBlend Graph logo shirts in stock, finally. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.